Thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Hardigan. The project I'm working on today is writing some underscore for an animated web series, The Chronicles of Sharpie and Quark. It's based on role-playing segments from the Harmontown podcast, which I'm a big fan of, and it's animated by the incredible Steve Demers. The cue I'm working on today goes with a brief action sequence in the cartoon, and I want to give you a quick look at the process of writing some action music from start to finish. My first step is to review the scene and make note of any sync points, moments where we want the music to sync up with what's happening on the screen. We'll use those points to find a good tempo for the piece of music. Wait, Sharpie, let me get your shoulders. <laughs> The button is pushed. The first pendulum grinds to a halt. Ah. Are there any more buttons? Well, there's probably two more, right? Push that sh mother. All right, you success. And the music ends somewhere right about there. Right at the beginning, we have those three cuts in rapid sequence, and Quark goes, "Wait, Sharpie, let me get in your shoulders." And there's there's a beat to that. And so I want to take the tempo for this cue from that little exchange. Wait, Sharpie, let me get in your shoulders. <laughs> Sharpie, let me get in your shoulders. So what I'm going to try to do is sync up to this visual cut. Wait, let me get... Right there. And have that be beat one of measure two. So the way I'm going to do that is first find exactly where that cut happens. Here it is, and I'm going to insert a marker there and block that marker. And now, using the adjust beats function, I'm going to drag beat one of measure two right over to that marker. So now, Wait, Sharpie, let me get your shoulders. And hopefully I'll be able to use that tempo for the rest of the cue. <laughs> so that button gets pushed on beat three of measure five. I'll stick a marker in there. I'm going to want to hit as much of the action as I can. It's a quick cue, and we want to sort of Mickey Mouse our way through it. <laughs> the button is pushed. The first pendulum grinds to a halt. I'm going to put my next marker right where Spencer says the word halt. Uh, are there any more buttons? Well, there's probably two more, right? Push that sh mother f So this button happens on beat two of measure 16. And the third one happens between beat four and beat one. It's basically two frames after beat four, and that's close enough that we can just call it beat four. So we have beat two and beat four at this tempo. One, two, three, four. Those are really weak beats, so I want to move it to stronger beats. So the way to do that is somewhere in the middle here, we are going to add a measure of 3-4, so we're cutting out a beat earlier so that those beats can be where we want them to be later on. So I'm going to pick an arbitrary one while they're talking here, and the music doesn't have to be particularly noticeable. Do a halt. Ah. Are there any more buttons? So how about measure 12 becomes 3-4? Well, there's probably two more, right? Push that, mother... Boom, boom. Three of 16 now, and one of 17. Now that we've made notes of where we want the music to hit, we can begin writing the actual music. For simpler pieces, I play the music directly into Digital Performer. But for this one, which is more on the intricate side, I'm going to go over to Finale and enter the notation. 
I've set up my orchestral score here to write for the Spitfire Albion Sample Library, which sounds great, but is based on instrument sections rather than individual instruments. So I have parts for high and low woodwinds, high and low brass, my strings, violins, viola, cello, bass, and a piano. I've set the file up to have the proper tempo, put in the time signature change in measure 12, and I put in all the markers for all the spots that I want to hit. So for action music, I'm thinking what I'll do is a sort of cliche action thing of a fairly dissonant line going on, and I'm going to double it with the piano and the basses and the uh, low woodwinds and just sort of walk around on, on the really fast quarter notes going something like that. Sometimes atonally, sometimes tonally, I want to quote portions of the uh, Sharpie and Quark adventure theme. So it'll just be little snippets of that, and when anything particularly heroic happens, we'll probably have like a full quote of a portion of that theme. I'm actually going to pencil in where I want to use that first. All right, in the ending first, that's definitely going to be on the brass, and it's going to be the end of that theme. And I'm going to do something very similar for the first button, which also happens on beat three. It'll probably be the first part of the theme this time. Now that we have the most important themes in place, we'll build the rest of the arrangement around it. First, let's figure out how to build up into the first button. We want to hit those first two cuts right at the start. Yeah, let's let's go up in whole tones. And then add some string lines for accompaniment. Next, we write in the rhythmic bass notes that will be giving tension to the middle of the cue. So all throughout here I want to be peppering in hints of that melody. And then we'll have the woodwinds, the high woodwinds answer. Let's give this a listen. Now, with most of the important melodic material written, we'll write in the rest of the bass notes leading into the accompaniment of the final theme and flesh it out with the rest of the instruments. Finally, adding some background figures in the strings during the middle section. So far, we've been listening to Finale play back the notation with built-in synths. Now it's time to export the MIDI, 
go back over to Digital Performer, and load up the Albion samples. Unfortunately, with all these samples loaded, having the video open tends to crash DP, so we'll have to wait until everything's mixed before we can see the scene alongside the queue. But for me, that adds a little to the excitement. Before it's finished, I'm going to go in and manually add some percussion that I didn't bother to put in the finale score. I'm slowing the tempo way down so I'll be more accurate with the timing. Now let's take a look at it next to the video. Wait, Sharpie, let me get in your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> the button is pushed. The first pendulum grinds to a halt. Ah. Are there any more buttons? Well, there's probably two more, right? Push that sh on the All right, you successfully pushed the button. I think it syncs up fairly well. More of the animation was finished while I was working on the queue. And the last two buttons don't sync up quite the way they did in the animatic, but I still think it works pretty well overall. So that's a quick look at putting together an action cue. Don't forget to subscribe and check back soon for some more in-depth videos on both the arranging and production end of things. And of course, if you have any questions on anything in particular, please do ask them in the comments. Thanks for watching.